I would say that all of his imaginary world, Middle Earth, uh, Arda, is uh, connected to the war, comes out of his war experience, is permeated with, uh, with the sense of war. It's a very, it's a very melancholy um, legendarium. Not just the Lord of the Rings, but also the Silmarillion, which is the background to it, is about war, is about conquest, is about um, reasons why people think they have to fight against one another. And the Lord of the Rings, which is his most popular work, is, is about men in war. It is about the anticipation of war, the encroachment of war onto peaceful peoples, the necessity uh, that comes sooner or later that you have to fight in order to hold on to what you value and what you treasure. And it's about all the things that you lose in a war. You lose your innocence, you lose your ignorance, you find out more about the world than you would like to know. You lose your friends. Tolkien said uh, when, he was, when he was writing the introduction to The Lord of the Rings, he said the First World War was much more terrible then the second, the First World War, was his war in which he was in, uh, on the front in, uh, in France, on the Somme. Uh, and he said, uh, by 1918, all but one of my close friends were dead. They had all been killed in the war, and Tolkien, after the war, as a writer, struggled very, very hard to find some meaning in all of this carnage, uh, in all the battles, in all the deaths of young men on both sides um, that seemed to him so unnecessary and yet so, um, so imminent so so very present. So his heroes uh, are hobbits. They are little people, not the great, not the grand, not the, um, not the important, but the, the ordinary people uh, that nobody pays attention to, who are the ones who always get chewed up in a war. And his hobbits, his four hobbits, Frodo, Sam, Mary, and Pippin all see various aspects of the war. They all come back, but they come back changed. And they come back with the memory of the ones who don't come back. The very last line in the book is, well, I'm back. But the irony of that is, behind that are all those who don't come back, who can't come back, who are dead. Uh, well, I think his work uh, on the surface embraces monarchy because it's about uh, the restoration of, of a kingship. Uh, but his own politics, uh, as they come through in the book, are uh, really very, very liberal. He was um, neither left nor right, as I think those are understood today. He was deeply conservative in the literal sense of that word, that is, of wanting to conserve, wanting to hold on to, wanting to preserve what he saw as the great gifts of civilization. Um, he once said 
after having been in the army in World War I that he could not imagine a situation in which it would be right for some men to give orders to other men and to direct their lives uh, in a kind of absolute way. Uh, he said in he said once and he was half joking but it was a serious joke. He said if I support any kind of political system it is anarchy. And which he meant not people throwing bombs. <laughs> uh, but the the right of every human being to make his or her own judgments, uh, to regulate his or her own life, and to live a life free from the domination of any government or of other people. He felt that the government and the individual, the hobbit, the little man, should work in symbiosis with each other.